The 2024 Bassmaster Elite Series is starting very soon, and rookie Ben Milliken of Milliken Fishing is going to join. And my question is, how do we think he's going to do? If you can do me a favor, if you like tackle reviews, vlogs with opinions and other stuff, click that like and subscribe button and become part of the team and family. So can Ben Milliken of Milliken Fishing make the transition to elite angler and become either rookie of the year or angler of the year? So some backstory. To get into leech, you need to fish all nine opens in the Bassmaster series and finish in the top nine. And Ben did it last year. It was one of the bigger news fishing related stories of the year. Now, Ben is a very polarizing person. Either you love him or you don't love him. And he is one of the owners of Six Sense Fishing. Ben started out on fire with an open win and just catapulted himself to that next level. But does the opens tournament series and consistency translate into an elite either angler of the year or rookie of the year i'm not sure but i have a little background in some things that i want to go over and then i want to hear your comment in the comments below and tell me what you think now i believe getting into the elites is the hardest tournament series to get into the opens are all over the country there's a couple hundred people in each tournament and to be consistent and get into the elites is as hard as any tournament series there is and there are some exceptional names in the elite series you have anglers like greg hackney and now jordan lee and brandon palanick and jacob prosnick and just kyle welcher i mean the list goes on and on that are anglers in the elite field and over the years we've seen lots of content creators which is a youtuber attempt to get into either the elites or another tournament series and just fall flat on their face Ben did not fall last year. He propelled himself to the top of the top in the Elite Series. He's making it into the Elite Series. And I'd like to think and speculate about how this year is going to fall for him. But I think he's in for a little bit of an awakening with several things that go on, even at the Classic, and then while he's out there fishing. To start off, one of the things, or I think one of the biggest things that he's going to find out is the flotilla of boats that might be following him. If you don't know Ben, Ben is is one of the biggest content creator YouTubers out there. He has 500 plus thousand subscribers and he has a lot of people that love him and a lot of people that hate him. But when he gets onto a new body of water or like the first body of water in Toledo Bend, there's a good chance he could have 10, 15, 20 boats following him. And that isn't even part of the problem. One of the things that always made Kevin Van Dam so good when he was fishing, because he had the flotilla of boats following him, is that he was able to direct the boats to where they would not interfere with his fishing. And this is something that he had a lot of pressure on. But ben, ben could and probably will have that same problem. And that isn't the biggest problem. Because when you go to that honey hole and the next day you wake up and you're a lower boat number and you go to your first spot and the anglers that were watching you are on your spot, it changes the way you have to fish. This is what I think is going to be Ben's biggest issue. With having the amount of subscribers and fans that he has, I think he's going to find out quickly that there's going to be a lot of boats not only following him, but remembering where he is and fishing those spots while he wants to fish them during the tournament. So Ben will have to have additional spots that he will have to kind of hide and then hit as the tournament goes on to have fish to himself. And that's going to be one of the biggest issues I think Ben's going to have. And this year's rookie crop of anglers for elites is no joke. Anglers like JT Tompkins, John Garrett, Trey McKinney, Robert Gee, Tyler Williams, Wesley Gore, Logan Parks, Kyle Patrick, and Tim Dube. I don't know if I said that name right, are all joining Ben in there. And honestly, JT Tompkins last year was one of the most consistent anglers on the in the Opens. He was he had seven top 25s throughout the year. And the Open schedule has a lot of similarities to the Elite schedule this year. And since the year 2012, which is one of the first years that myself and Boudreaux and Mike went to the Classic and started really diving into the Bass 
bass industry, the average angler to win rookie of the year was 651 points. That is the goal. If you can get to that 625, 650, you could be looking at rookie of the year. But like I said, this year's schedule for the elites is very similar to what the opens were last year. And Ben should have three or four fantastic finishes to start off with. Toledo Ben, he won last year. He dominated there. He could, He's probably going to have a good start off tournament at Toledo Bend. So look for him to do real well. Second is Lake Fork. I mean, the guy catches more big fish in Texas than anybody on this earth, I think, at this point in time. So stop two or event two for the leads on Lake Fork should be another one where he does very well. Having back to back successful tournaments could jumpstart his elite series and a possible angler of the year or rookie of the year. Then the elites go to the Harris chain and the St. John's River and I think he'll do extremely well on the Harris chain. That's where he finished last year to finish in second or third and he knows Lake Apopka really well. Texas and Florida fish kind of similar so I expect to see Ben do really well on the Harris chain again and that's right around the corner for me so I'll try to get out there and see him. After that St. John's. I think the St. John's will fish a lot different than what he's used to with the Harris Chain or the Kissimmee Chain Lakes, but I think he'll stu still do pretty well on the St. John's River. Though, the problem with the St. John's River is they've been there so many times. The anglers that have consistent consistently go there year after year after year after year. I mean, it's been like three or four or five years. I don't even know, to be honest. Those guys know the spots and they'll be trying to push to get to those spots first. So Ben might have a mediocre tournament there, but I still think he'll finish in that top 25-30. I think when they get to stop five in Lake Murray is where things will change for him, though he is really great at live scope and that I think he's going to have to really push himself to fish really well on Lake Murray. I don't think it'll be a failure for him, but I think it's going to be one of those tougher tournaments for him. Just as well, because the next one at Wheeler Lake, he's been absolutely fast fabulous at. He's finished fourth last year in the Open on Wheeler Lake. So when you look at those first six tournaments, there's really only Wheeler Lake that is maybe new to him and the rest of them he should do fairly well, I think. But having those first six start off should be fun to watch and especially if you're a fan of Milliken. So the seven stops at Smith Lake. Now I don't know how close Lake Ufala is to Smith Lake, but he finished fifth last year in Lake Ufala. Now does that convert into how well he'll do on, on Smith Lake? I don't know, but there should be some consistency in the fishing. But I think when you get to event seven, eight, and nine, this is when he's going to have to really grind it out and try his best and really turn it up. To win Rookie of the Year is all about consistency and while I know he wants to win and be successful and get back to another classic, make that top 35 or 40 or whatever it is, 40 to 35 that they take, I think that when they get to, when he gets to Le uh, Smith Lake and then Lake, Ch Lake Champlain and then the St. Lawrence River, that's really when it's going to get tough. Now, I don't know about Smith Lake, Lake, I don't know how he'll do in Lake Champlain because that's a smallmouth fishery. That's another one where you're drop, drop shotting in your live scope and forward facing sonar plays a huge part of how you do. So we'll see how he does there. But the St. Lawrence River, he finished 93rd last year in the Bassmaster Open. So I think as that year goes by, like I said, the the schedule is much tougher for him. Now, they aren't completely new places. There's a couple that are new, but he has a little bit of knowledge at almost every place. But can he win Rookie of the Year? Can he win Angler of the Year? That's what I want to know. That's what I want you to tell me in the comments below. Can Ben Milliken of Milliken Fishing win Rookie of the Year? I don't know. I'd like to see it. I think Ben is going to be one of the bigger storylines that happen in the leads this year. He was a huge storyline in the opens and making it and just the following that he has is exceptional. It's extraordinary. And like I said, there are a lot of guys that have went from being content creators and tried to become professional anglers and have just fallen on their face. They just weren't good enough anglers. And there's a lot of content creators that were professional fishermen that couldn't get it done that now do YouTube. Ben is one of those guys that can has and can do both. He can create great content. He can fish extremely well and win tournaments. And when you put them both together, both worlds colliding. Comes into contact with this world, his worlds collide. <laughs> You know what happens then? <coughs> That's what we're going to see how it works out. Is he going to have a successful season? I, in my opinion, I think he is. 
I just think that those last three tournaments could really be tough for him. But if he grinds it out, finds fish, and is able to control the flotilla of boats that are going to be following him at, at all times, he could do very, very well. And I wish him the best of luck. So how do you think Ben is going to do in the elites this year, in the 2024 season? Comment below and tell me what you think. Thanks for hitting that like and subscribe button. Make sure you take a kid fishing. Get your fish on. I'm sorry if I mispronounced any names. Heaven forbid. Talk to you soon. Cheers.